Welcome to another episode of This Is Anything Goes and today we will be changing the radiator fan of the Toyota Alpha. This is the GGH20. So this fan is not working. The aircon fan still works. So let's get to it. First off, while not necessary if you're careful enough, but just to be on the safe side, disconnect the negative on your battery. to remove this cover so one two three four clips next up is to remove the four um, fasteners over here one two three four so this uses a size 10 mm Once that is done, just pull it out. There will be about four clips on the bottom, but the top should be loose. Okay, so next up, we will be disconnecting all the connectors. So we have one down here, one here, one here, one over here. If you have the link keep assist, if not, it, this usually will be empty. Then we have one here, one here, and one over here. Okay, so once we have gotten all those, we'll move it to the side. And then we'll remove this two clips. And then we'll remove this. Same goes with this side. Okay. Okay, so now that we've gotten the wire out and put to the side over here. And then we got one plastic piece out, but this is still stuck. So I've loosened it, but let's just leave it as that first. So you can see we have taken out the LKA sensor, the plastic thingy and the grill. Now the next thing we need to do is to remove this bolt, which is a size 10, 10, 10, 12, 10. Okay, so four tens, one twelve. And to remove the LKA sensor just now, it was just 10, 10, and 10 over here. And a connector. Okay, so we'll remove this and then we'll wiggle this out. We'll remove this, we'll move it to the back. And then we'll remove... Oh, yeah, we'll remove the, those that I just said. Okay. Okay, now that we have gotten all those disconnected, right? I'm putting back the nut into it, the bolt into it, because I just don't want to lose it or I don't want to use the wrong bolt on the wrong place later. But yeah, you get it, all right? Everything's disconnected. Now, the next thing we need to do, we need a 12 mm here, 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 and here, four, and then one 10 mm here. Okay, so there's five bolts we need to remove and we should be clear to remove this. You might want to disconnect this cable by just pulling it out. And I think we will need to disconnect this as well. Weird that it has something like that, okay. So just disconnect that. Yep. That's one way of doing it. Okay, so five bolts and I'll be back. Okay, now that we've gotten all the five bolts out, let's see if we can remove this. Okay, from what I can see, the way to proceed now is a 12 mm over here and a 12 mm over there. Okay, and then we should be able to remove this. It's most likely one, two clips at the back here. So let's get to that. Okay, so once we've gotten the two bolts out, uh, as you can see, I broke this because the previous person who actually tightened it, tightened it too much and the nut, this nut is broken and the fellow cross thread it and yeah, as you can see. They either cross thread it or they used um, Loctite over here and 
yeah, it was free spinning. So it took me like three hours to get that out. And it also resulted in this thing being broken. So I have to find a way to actually glue this back. Thank God it didn't affect the radiator cover actually. So that is still usable. And I removed the battery just to um, give me more space. Okay, so now we're at this stage. Um, yeah, once you took the two bolts out, you can just lift this up. So now we're at this stage where we need to separate this. So be right back. Okay, so update. It has actually been one week since I started this project. And it has been one week since I actually um, recorded anything. So here is what has happened. As you can see, there is a lot of uh, things being removed. So what happened was that I was trying to pry this uh, open so that I can take out the fan. So I've managed to take out the blades. As you can see, that's where the blades are. I've put everything in the car just for safekeeping. But what is interesting is I was not able to pry this enough to actually remove the motor. And I've actually stripped two out of three uh, screws that mounts the motor. So now I will need to actually remove the entire radiator. And to do that, a lot more things came out. That came out. Yeah, that came out. That was from here, here, and here. Okay, that was easy. The wires over here was actually from the headlights. So it connects to one, two, three here, and then it connects to a ground over here. That's done. Move on one side. Um, <coughs> the condenser, you can just lift it up and put it to the side later. And then on the bottom, there were some screws to remove uh, about 10 of them. And also two clips just to loosen up the bracket over here. I am waiting for another two to arrive so I can actually open the radiator clip over here. And then we should be able to lift this up. Alright, so I'll keep you updated. When I get pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've managed to separate out the radiator and the fan assembly and let me tell you this is being getting to be a bit more trouble than I was expecting. Actually it's really more trouble than I was expecting but this is on a whole different level. So what we have right now is the screws over here has actually stripped and I can't get these two screws out. So I will be dicing it and then hopefully opening it. I will show you in a short uh, that I will probably publish in a couple of days. But yeah, let's get this motor out. Okay, so we got the motor out. The mount is good over here. So yeah, one of the screws actually came out. Uh, the other one I have to actually use the Dremel and bust it out. Okay, you can see there's a lot of carbon dust coming out from the motor itself. Okay, so we will be replacing this motor even though it, I tested it and it's running but I don't trust it. So what we will be doing now is we will be replacing it with a one-to-one -one replacement. So this is from Denso and the code as you can see is 1680007932. So this is on the radiator side, not the aircon side. The aircon side uses a different motor. So make sure you get the correct motor when you're replacing it. So the one on the aircon side is 
2630 Alright, it might be different uh, in terms of the thickness So make sure you get the correct one, alright Okay, so we'll be installing this back I have to find a screw to screw it back I think I have plenty Okay, uh, after that we'll be installing the fan blades Then we'll be installing this back to the radiator And then we'll move the radiator back inside And assemble back everything else Sounds easy, but this took me quite a while. Okay, so now that we have the motor installed, make sure it's tight, it's not loose, and as you can see, there's a new screw here. Alright, shiny. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to install back the fan, and as you can see, the nudge is in this manner, so just match it. Alright, just match it. Okay, we have it. Nice, then we'll go back the nut. And this uses an 8mm to tighten. So the motor might be moving. So what you can do is hold the blades and tighten it. Okay, that's it. Got this in. Moving on. Okay, so the next thing to do is attach the entire assembly to the radiator. So just put it where it's supposed to be and then there is four bolts okay you only need to tighten the bottom which is over here one and over here one okay the other top one not yet that one's later okay, once you have attached the two bolts over here and there what you need to do is you need to flip it so that it's facing like this and i'll be changing this plastic because the oil is leaking and what we need to do now is connect this this hose with this hose okay as you can see i'm wearing gloves because i don't want to get dirty okay the wires for this is routed from here to here sorry from here to here and then connect it okay so yeah let's get to it okay so we have gotten the radiator in and this was easier easier than uh pulling it out because i do not have that that uh, holes over there which I will connect later but so once you have this in make sure it the bottom hits into the correct mount then uh, the condenser goes to the mount as well so you have it neat like this <sighs> sorry I'm still out of breath then you connect your radiator hose from here to here and then you have the um, transmission uh, coolant hose over here there's two of it all right there's one and two okay so once you have that connected now it's time to connect this portion wish me luck <laughs> okay note to everyone next time make sure you have this hose in before you put the radiator down it was hell on earth okay so now what i'll do is i'll bolt this from the bottom and it is Four bolts and six screws, if I remember correctly. Seven screws. It should be eight, but one's missing. And two clips. Two of these. Okay. okay. So once that is done, our next thing to put is this one. Okay, this is the top cover. So just align it. Somehow we go it in. And then there's one bolt here and one bolt here, alright? Okay, so we'll wiggle this in. And this in and then we'll install that okay so yeah just make sure there's no screws blocking one two three four five okay just make sure these five screws are not blocking you will be able to put it in make sure your radiator mount the rubber mount is here as well this is a bit hard i might change this in the future but not now all right okay the sun is coming i'm almost out of time but i am sort of done all right so we have installed this back in okay we have installed back this pipe in which i've shown you how to remove it in the beginning of the video so just reverse engineer it and you have gotten gotten it same as this same as this all the plugs are connected this is installed back so the most important thing about this lka is make sure you don't uh, adjust this over here one and two and so of three here all right because if not it will go out of the way and your reading will be wrong okay so this is installed this is installed 
everything's good this is held on by clips clips three bolts one two three here one one this one is for the battery which is over here so i'll install that off camera after this this is what's left this is for the plastic cover on top this is for the grill in the front so no extra screws no extra uh, bolts no extra nuts nothing perfection perfection all right so i'll have all this installed and i'll fill up the radiator i will make one more video because this is a bit more different to to fill up all right so stay tuned for that make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the bell button so you get notified when i upload that video it is not your typical way of refilling your coolant all right so everything's done let's just put everything back in and we'll test it out and see if the fan runs all right well guess what guys it's working Okay, so time to add the coolant, but that will be in another video. On to the summary! Okay, so that's the end of this DIY. It has actually been about a month since I recorded it and since I've actually finished this uh, DIY. So, basically the problem that I had with this car was that whenever I'm stopped at a traffic light or parking for a period of time, with the engine running the aircon does not get cold it starts to get warmer and warmer not too warm but still inefficient all right so when i check it turns out that the problem was that the fan was not turning and you saw how i change it and that's how how you change it so there's actually two methods to do it the first method that i tried and failed miserably was to remove all the front items over here and then just pry the radiator and the uh, fan cover apart and just take out the motor but that didn't work because i stripped two screws on the uh, motor mount so i have to remove the whole thing which was seriously not something i wanted to do but i had to do it because the whole car is already apart and I can't put it back and drive it around. Okay, so yes, um, you are most probably thinking how much it cost me. So it cost me about 220 ringgit for the parts alone. And if I were a workshop and I want to charge on this, I'll probably charge about two, 300 ringgit for labor. But of course, I have actually asked the workshops outside how much would they charge me and they were saying 800 900 ringgit so yeah i was thinking huh, eight nine hundred ringgit i can do it for 220 and get a bit of exercise out of it but well tell you what it was fun but if you ask me to do it again i will think two three maybe five times before i actually do it all right okay so knowing we uh what i know already because i've never done this before um, I would say the time that, that it will take to actually complete this DIY is probably about 4 hours. The second method, or at least the second method. Okay, so, yeah. As usual, I hope you learned something on this. Uh, if you do, make sure you hit that. Make sure you hit subscribe and make sure you hit the bell button so you get notified on our next upload, alright? Till then, I will see you again.